Ashton from the G7 overnight. Uh, a little bit more, it seems, of that kicking the tin can down the road. What are you watching for now? We do have, of course, the ECB meeting tonight for another decision on rates. What do you think we'll see starting there? A bit of a disappointing G7 teleconference. No surprises there, though. Um, some mixed reports coming through, but no clear action coming from that teleconference last night. We will be watching the European Central Bank tonight, but the consensus is an expectation of no change in rates, uh, so rates to remain at 1%. We will get updated forecasts on economic output and inflation, so that's going to be watched very closely. And the European Commission, it releases its bank resolution uh, proposal tonight. Now, this is a long-term plan for a bank union but it's not meant to d deal with or help Spain out of its current banking crisis but no doubt Spain will be very much in focus we did see the 10-year yields coming down overnight to 6.3 percent but this of course is ahead of a bond auction tomorrow so the market's going to be watching these bank yields uh, these 10-year bond yields very closely especially given that we did see Spain's uh, budget minister coming out to say that Spain has effectively been locked out of capital markets. So still a lot of concerns around those European markets. It does look like tonight's going to be a pretty big one. But if we have a look at how risk assets traded overnight, it was very cautious but still higher risk sentiment. And we did see the European markets as well as the US markets gain. So saying that basically the costs associated with, with television, what it does, uh, uh, will indeed be a little bit lower for this financial year but next financial year they're expected to to increase by mid to high single digits what sort of an impact is that likely to have on the group's bottom line given this capital raising well we know that 10 competes with nine and seven but in a, a younger age demographic and what they've been trying to do is spend more on programming and it does look like there will be extra costs in the next financial year as you mentioned but to give a little bit of background on what 10 is going through their last result we saw no guidance being given for that television business Business, and they were saying that the, the, the advertising market remains quite short with limited visibility. Today we've seen a little bit of guidance coming through saying that TV revenue will be under pressure near term and they don't see any improvement. We know that they have been trying to sell off iCorp. Now this is their outdoor advertising unit. If we have a look at the breakup in EBITDA of television versus their outdoor advertising, well television makes up 90% of earnings while we see uh, the outdoor advertising around about 10%. But the sale of iCorp would essentially help to de-stress the balance sheet. It'd bring in probably around about $125 million to $150 million through the door. But it does look like uh, negotiations are still in an advanced stage there and it's not a good time to be offloading media assets when uh, of course media is at a cyclical low and advertising is at a cyclical low as well so I guess that iCorp transaction still being eyed but I guess the problem with 10 is that it is a highly leveraged business and when you do see revenue coming under pressure it does have a big impact in terms of earnings so it does have quite a bit of debt on its books it's got refinancing of 210 million dollars in March 2013 this capital raising just gives it a little bit more room to move and to breathe given the weakness in the markets but altogether pretty disappointing given the run of bad news that we've seen from the media sector.